A lot of people had questions about what the man booker is for. They say, you know, is the man booker here to acknowledge the achievements of well-established authors? Or is the man booker prize here in order to recognize the new talent of first-time authors? And the answer to those questions is yes. Uh, the Man Booker, I think, is there to do both of those things. Uh, but to explain what the Man Booker is about, I personally would take a step further back. I would say it's about helping to develop and to nurture the public's love of the written word, in particular of fiction. It's there to stimulate interest amongst those people, perhaps, who don't have much experience of reading fiction. Uh, and it's a handy guide to those people who perhaps don't have time during the year to read more than a small number of books. It offers some sort of guide to those people about which books, at least in the opinion of this group of judges, represent the right choice, uh, the, the, the books that have stood out for this particular group of people. And it's already been mentioned that Anne Enright last year has now enjoyed sales of 500,000 for her book, The Gathering. So I think it's apparent that there is this thirst, this hunger for fiction, uh, and it is apparent that the man booker is playing some sort of role in that. And given the extraordinarily high quality of the books that we had this year, I personally hope that that uh, Philip to sales will extend not only to the winner, but to all the books that were on the list. Uh, today we gathered, as I told you, at lunchtime to make the decision. It, uh, it wasn't like the previous occasions when, uh, for the long list and for the short list, we were able to reach a settlement uh, very quickly. There wasn't immediate unanimity. We took our time. We wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to uh, discuss each book fully. Uh, and I must say, I was very moved by the quality of the debate uh, amongst the judges. I thought it was absolutely excellent. The pros and cons of each book were fully discussed. And uh, maybe I could make a suggestion for the future that those discussions might be uh, tape recorded, sound recorded, uh, as something that might be lodged in the archive of the Man Booker, obviously not to be revealed for some considerable time to come. Um, but I think there is an increasing interest in the archive of the Man Booker, and that would make a very, very interesting contribution. So today, uh, there wasn't uh, blood on the floor, uh, but neither was it an easy meeting. It was uh, an emotional meeting. But what was so marvellous about the way that the judges had become used to working together was that there was enormous respect for each judge's opinion. There was a lot of give and take. We exhaustively probed what would happen if any book was a winner. Who would, who would feel happy with that? Who would feel uh, unhappy with that decision? So we went about it in all these different ways and with the spirit that had characterized our deliberations from the beginning, we found that we could arrive at a proper accommodation. The emotion was because, as one judge put it, we were being asked really to compare a lion and a giraffe. Uh, one's reaction to any book has to be entirely subjective. Uh, it is about that emotional reaction between book and reader, and there is no substitute for each person experiencing that for himself or for herself. So the, ju the judges were looking at books with very different strengths and very different merits, and they were trying to come to a decision. And uh, it was emotionally draining. I think by the end of it, the judges uh, were exhausted. They had put uh, everything that they could into that decision. And really, I thought each of the books had enormous strengths. Uh, Arav and Adiga's immensely angry book, I didn't get that anger coming from him in his video clip just now, but an angry book about 
uh, poverty in India from which there is no escape, which he likens to uh, the chicken coop. Uh, Sebastian Barry's deeply moving novel about an old lady's reminiscences, the old lady that he said was based on a relation uh, locked away in an asylum for years, uh, the causes of her imprisonment uh, absolutely obscure. Amitav Ghosh's uh, wonderful piece of narrative, a real rip-roaring uh, sea shanty of a story with enormous humour and fantastic linguistic dexterity. A lot of the book is to do with confusions uh, between people speaking English but from their different origins with the ambiguities and misunderstandings that can arise from that. Uh, Linda Grant's uh, lovely book about um, a girl and her relationship with her father, a girl who discovers an uncle that she didn't know, a criminal uncle, and the gradual transfer of her understanding and her affection from her father towards her uncle. And by an extraordinary coincidence, uh, Steve Toltz from Australia producing a book which is also about a narrator who has a relationship obviously with his father but has, but has also an uncle who is a criminal and in that book the issue between the two is resolved differently. And Philip Hensher's uh, fine book about these two families from Sheffield, a book about very ordinary people uh, but a book which manages not to be in any way uh, ordinary. Spread over more than 700 pages, uh, some people may be put off by its hefty appearance, but I can promise you that the pages turn very easily and very quickly and with enormous enjoyment. And so we really had six quite wonderful books between which we were able to choose. In a few moments, uh, I'm going to be able to tell you uh, what the winner of uh, this prize is. But once again, I want to emphasize that really all six books have been of extraordinary merit. The winner of the Man Booker Prize 2008 is a debut novelist it's Aravinda Diga, the White Tiger.